Welcome and we are all back again at Mad Medicine. So this time the topic is conjunctiva and I have divided this lecture into various parts. So this is the part one of the conjunctiva lecture. In this we will do some basics such as the anatomy of the conjunctiva uh, and as well as the classification of a very important conjunctival disease and that is conjunctivitis. Okay and then we will also start a little bit about bacterial conjunctivitis. So starting with the anatomy of the conjunctiva. So as you know conjunctiva it is a transparent mucous membrane which is present over the sclera. Okay. Uh, now a little bit about the anatomy we are going to study. It is made up of three layers. Okay. The topmost layer is the epithelium. Then you have an adenoid layer or the lymphoid layer and then you have a fibrous layer. So epithelium is variable means um, it is multi-layered epithelium. It is stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium and it differs from place to place how much will be the number of layers. Now this conjunctiva it is divided into three parts. Okay, so one is the bulbar conjunctiva, the second is palpebral and one is the fornix. Okay, so uh, bulbar conjunctiva which is present over the globe, the orbit. Okay. Uh, then you have the palpebral conjunctiva and the third is the fornix. So bulbar conjunctiva is nothing specific further but when we talk about palpebral conjunctiva so in this there are three parts further there is MTO MTO so M for marginal then T is for tarsal and O is for orbital part of palpebral conjunctiva okay so the fornix it is the place where the bulbar and the palpebral conjunctiva they meet okay so it is just a cul-de-sac right and we have discussed about the basic histology of the conjunctiva. It is made up of three layers, the epithelium, the adenoid layer and the fibrous layer. Okay. So in this adenoid layer, we have some lymphocytes and these can develop into follicles. Okay. In certain conditions. Okay. There are certain conditions where you get follicles in the conjunctiva. Certain cases of follicular conjunctivitis, such as a very characteristic one is trachoma. So this is the importance of this adenoid layer follicles okay then there is epithelium along with epithelium there are goblet cells which will secrete the mucus so when we're talking about mucus itself there are two other glands which will also secrete mucus okay so uh, one is your gland uh, of uh, this one gland of mans okay this gland of mans it will also secrete mucus and also the goblet cells they will also secrete mucus okay and third is the crypt of henley crypt of henley so let's have a look at the diagram of the glands so here is your this yellow part is the crypt of henley this will also secrete mucus also these goblet cells in the epithelium they will also secrete mucus and you also have glands of mans okay so henley mans and goblet cells these three secrete mucus then there are some accessory lacrimal glands which secrete watery or serous secretions these include the glands of cross, these pink ones, the glands of cross and the glands of wolf ring. Okay, so we discuss about the glands of the conjunctiva, the basic histology of conjunctiva, the layers, the importance of layers, the various parts, how the conjunctiva is present in the form of bulbar, in the form of palpebral and the fornix. So there are four fornix, okay, superior, inferior, medial and lateral. Okay, so that was all about the anatomy of the conjunctiva, the basic anatomy we know. Uh, now let us come to conjunctivitis okay so it's the most common pathology of conjunctiva and we all have had uh, perhaps an episode of conjunctivitis that is pink eye when we were small okay so it's a very very common condition that we get to see among the children okay so conjunctivitis it is the inflammation of conjunctiva also there is some discharge which is present right uh, now in this conjunctivitis depending upon the cause it can be into two broad categories it could be infectious and allergic okay infectious and allergic right so in infectious also it could be bacterial viral chlamydial or some granulomatous or ophthalmia neonatorum and in case of allergic it could be because of certain uh, means certain feature means certain types of allergic conjunctivitis like you have simple allergic conjunctivitis which could be seasonal, perennial, like that, okay? So let us start with the classification. So in the classification, we have infective and allergic. So in case of infective, we have, as I told you already, bacterial, okay? 
So you can write infective conjunctivitis in bacterial, viral, chlamydial, granulomatous, and ophthalmia neonatorum. Okay. So in bacterial, there are various uh, bacteria which are associated such as Staph aureus, Haemophilus influenza, Morazella, okay, the axon filled bacillus, uh, and also you have some species of streptococcus like strep pneumonia, strep pyogenes, uh, Neisseria gonorrhea, Neisseria meningitis, and diphtheria, all these. Okay, so these are the causes of bacterial. Uh, the bacterial and further bacteria, you can write it could be like acute, hyper acute, or it could be chronic also. It could be angular as well. Okay. So these are the various bacterial. Now viral. Viral could be caused by adenovirus. So then it has two forms. It could be epidemic keratoconjunctivitis or it could be pharyngoconjunctival fever. And apart from that, you have enterovirus or herpes simplex and molluscum contagiosum. Okay. Then we have chlamydia and chlamydia. Basically, the most important is trachoma. Uh, then we come to granulomatous causes, certain uh, various granulomatous diseases in that there is POS. And lastly, you come to ophthalmia neonatorum. So that's again a very important problem that we see in the neonates born. Okay, so that was about infective. Now we're coming to allergic. In allergic, you can write the first is simple. Number two is VKC, that is vernal keratoconjunctivitis. And the third one is your phylacty nula. Okay, then there are some uncommon types of conjunctivitis such as cicatricial, the scarring one, and one is toxic, which is caused by various burns, you know, such as chemical injury and because of certain drugs and all. Okay, it can cause the uh, toxic type of conjunctivitis. Okay, so now we can do about bacterial conjunctivitis. Okay, now bacterial conjunctivitis, you know, what is happening as I already told you, the causative organisms. Okay, the very common, the most common is Staph aureus. Apart from that, you have Haemophilus influenzae. Uh, Haemophilus influenzae, it is also called as the Cox weak bacilli. Okay, then uh, you have very specific features like if it is caused by um, Streptococcus pneumoniae, then it causes patechial hemorrhage. So there are some patechia. Okay, then if it is pyogenes, then there is a pseudo membrane formation. A true membrane may be formed in diphtheria. Uh, and then there are some special features like even Morazella, Ketaril, uh, Morazella is also quite common, the axon field bacilli. Okay, and there are certain bacteria which can cross the intact cornea, such as Miseria gonorrhea, the meningitis, uh, Pseudomonas, as well as Corine bacterium diphtheria. Okay, Pseudomonas is the most common cause of angular conjunctivitis, angular conjunctivitis, okay. So these were the various causative organisms. Now coming to the signs. What uh, first the symptoms? What will the patient say to you? That what I what is my problem and why has the patient come to you? So he will say that I am getting this redness in the eye. There is a slight blurring of vision. There is this discomfort called as grittiness or some foreign body sensation. And also I am having some mild photophobia, a little bit of discharge. So these will be the symptoms. Nothing very um, you know. It's nothing too much. Okay, so these will be some mild general symptoms. Then the signs that we'll further check upon. So we'll see the conjunctiva will be congested. So there will be conjunctival type of a congestion, which is present more in the palpebral conjunctiva and in the fornices. Okay, so we will find this type of congestion. We will see the mucoperulent discharge. Uh, mucoperulent discharge. The lids will be stuck together. There will be difficulty in opening the lids. And you will see the discharge, you will see the congestion, okay, the difficulty in opening the lids, okay, and the redness of the eye, okay. So these are the various findings, uh, the symptoms, uh, the signs that we will also see in the patient, right. So we have discussed this. Okay, the pathology, the clinical features, now comes the management, okay. So these diagrams also we can see that this is showing the mucopyrillant discharge, the lids, uh, the eyelashes, they are stuck together. There is difficulty to open the eye and there is conjunctival congestion towards the fornices. Okay, so there is some photophobia. Again, discharge is present. 
and the conjunctive or the palpebral conjunctive and the phonics which is showing congestion fine so this is uh, we'll have a comparative view later we're coming to that so let's do the last part in this that is bacterial conjunctivitis and that is the management so in management uh, you can also do something simple you know like you can ask the patient to wear uh, dark goggles and all because uh, what is happening the person is having photophobia okay but we should start with antivirus these antibiotic drops we can start so we usually start with broad spectrum such as chloramphenicol 1% or tobramycin gentamicin 0.3% 4 hourly and if these are not working then we can go with the fluoroquinolones okay so that will be antibiotic drops in the night you can apply the ointment then we have irrigation with normal saline once a day or twice a day so that the secretions and the pathogen along with that gets washed off and then dark goggles sometimes cold compress but bandaging must be not done because bandaging what it will do it will increase the temperature okay so that will be a conducive environment for the bacteria to grow and secondly it will not allow the discharge to escape so bandaging is contraindicated also steroids are contraindicated you can give some analgesics if there is some pain okay so you can give analgesics that is optional so that was about the management of uh, bacterial conjunctivitis. Okay, so nothing very special. And we have discussed about uh, all the findings also. Okay, and all the causes, all these features we have discussed. Uh, now, as we saw that uh, this conjunctivitis will be because of various causes. So in very short and quickly, we will do the high yield points that what are the main differences between the different types of conjunctivitis. So like if they uh, ask you that where are papillae formed okay so papillae are formed in allergic type then where are follicles present they are present in viral and chlamydial okay viral viral and chlamydial the follicles may be present okay trachoma that is chlamydial so follicles and papillae we have discussed in trachoma you also get the panis formation okay that is very specific for trachoma follicles and papillae we discussed we discussed about the panis and then comes the type of discharge with which we can also understand the type of conjunctivitis so in bacteria it is usually mucoid or mucopirulent or it if if it's gonococcal then it's really heavily purulent okay so mucoid mucopirulent or purulent discharge viral you get a watery serous allergic you get again serous ropey discharge in chlamydia again you get a mucoperulent type of a discharge okay so that was about the type of discharge and uh, so on these features we can uh, it can help us to differentiate also you know uh, the preauricular lymphadenopathy it is associated with bacterial and viral also too much of chemosis that is swelling of the conjunctiva it is usually seen in bacterial and allergic only the chemosis of the conjunctiva so these are the different features through which we can have a differential diagnosis between the most common and important causes of conjunctivitis. Now coming to acute red eye. So there are various conditions which will cause acute red eye and these are conjunctivitis, uveitis and acute angle closure glaucoma. So how will I diagnose at once that what is the patient suffering from out of these three? He will present with acute red eye. Okay, painful acute red eye. So first of all, let us start with the onset. The onset, so I will go like this, okay? First, I will tell about conjunctivitis, then uveitis, and then angle closure, glaucoma. So onset, here it is gradual, again gradual, angle closure, it is sudden onset. Okay, pain, in these conditions, it is not that much, but in acute angle closure, glaucoma, ACG, it is very acute, painful condition. So the onset, the pain, the vision, it is not markedly diminished in the first two, but in angle closure glaucoma, the vision will be markedly diminished. Okay, then colored halos, they are very specific for ACG, the presence of colored halos. Okay, then the type of discharge. In the first one, that is a conjunct, but it's like if it is bacterial, there will be mucopirulent discharge, but in the other two, there will be serous watery discharge. Okay, then congestion. Congestion in conjunctivitis, it will be conjunctival or superficial. But in case of uveitis and ACG, it will be deep ciliary congestion. 
or the circumcorneal congestion. ठीक है at the level of limbus circumcorneal congestion. Right. Uh, apart from that, uh, so we discuss all this. Uh, the vision will be markedly impaired. Then we will go for IOP. When we measure the IOP, it will be markedly raised in case of ACG. Then there are some other features like uh, your anterior chamber. It will be normally conjunctivitis. In uveitis, you will get a deep AC. In ACG, you will get a shallow AC. Okay, anterior chamber. Then coming to the shape of pupil, that is also very important and simple. Uh, shape of pupil in case of conjunctivitis will be normal. It will be round. Okay. Uh, in case of uveitis, the pupil is usually festooned pupil because of posterior sinic here. And in ACG, the pupil is usually a mid-dilated pupil, a vertically mid-dilated pupil. And finally, the iris. Iris uh, is normal in conjunctivitis. In uveitis, iris is muddy. And in ACG, the iris is quite edematous. So these are the very simple features. Let's quickly revise the points, okay? So the pain, you first start with the onset, then about the pain, about the vision, uh, about the colored halos, about the discharge, the type of congestion in the eye. And then you can also tell about uh, like start from anterior to posterior, tell about the anterior chamber, then the iris, then the pupil, okay, and then the intraocular pressure. So these are the various findings which will help to differentiate between these three important conditions. Now finally congestion, let's quickly have a look at what are the various features, how will we differentiate if it is conjunctival, that is superficial or it is a deep ciliary congestion that is also called circumcorneal, right. So first I will tell the point for conjunctival and then for circumcorneal, okay. Conjunctival it is superficial, that means disease of the conjunctiva. The circumcorneal is some deep seated disease like disease of the cornea or deep seated disease means disease of the uveal tract, okay. Here it is present in the fornix and in the peripheral part. Here it is present in the uh, limbus, around the limbus or at the level of the limbus. Then this one, it is uh, usually quite bright red. It is pale. It's um, in the flow of blood is centripetal, centrifugal. Here the branching is quite profuse. Here the branching is limited. It blanches immediately when we give vasoconstrictor. There is delayed blanching of the vessels. The pathology uh, means the vessel which is involved is posterior conjunctival vessels. Here it is anterior ciliary vessels. Okay. Then the mobility. This one will move with the conjunctiva. It does not move with conjunctiva. Then the last point is that conjunctival is superficial just like related to conjunctivitis. So usually tenderness is not present. But in the deep ciliary, usually tenderness is present. Okay, and examples where you will get conjunctiva, it will be conjunctivitis and where you will get the CC type, it will be again corneal pathology like corneal ulcer and other deep-seated problems of the uveal tract such as uveitis, iritis, etc. Okay, so uh, that was all about part one. So we discussed about basics of conjunctivitis, the anatomy of conjunctiva conjunctivitis the classification and we also did bacterial conjunctivitis and we did important differential diagnosis between the types of conjunctivitis between the causes of acute red eye and between the two types of congestion okay so thanks a lot for watching and please do like subscribe and share